Hey guys, what is up? John here from fly8mikealpha.com. Today in the hangar for a very serious question. How bad is it really to fly with a missing rivet? All right, if you have a lot of common sense here, then you probably already know the answer to this. There's thousands of rivets on our aircraft. We've taken out most of them from this wing, so not much is really holding this wing together any longer. How bad is that really when, well, basically 99% of the rivets are drilled out? Well, that's, uh, you be the judge of it. Um, yeah, so you can jump up and down on it. And quite frankly, how would you know any different if I jumped up and down on the airplane, wiped off my dirty little footprints, and then you came out pre-flighted, said, hey, it looks good, and you went to go fly. Well, you wouldn't necessarily, right? These airplanes go through a lot of abuse over their years and something to really think about. Maybe slow down your pre-flight, take a nice thorough look at everything. We've got lots of videos on the channel and especially on the website on flyatmikealf.com about good thorough pre-flights. Just a little side note about this one. Let's think about it. When's the last time you did a pre-flight and your knees were all dirty afterwards? Quite frankly, if you're doing a pre-flight on any airplane, high wing or low wing, and you don't have some dirt on your knees, you're not really doing what you're supposed to be doing. Well, let me show you what I'm talking about here. So meet me under here, under our wing, on our Piper Cherokee, and well, let's take a look here. Under the airplane, the place you don't often look, right? We have our flap attachment right there, okay? Now, what is this guy? What is this big piece of steel right here? You're probably asking yourself. Well, that's actually what's attaching your aft spar, attaching your wing, inside the fuselage of the airplane. That's what's holding your wing on, all right? That's, that's the easiest way to explain it. That is holding your wing on. What do you think? That space is there? Well, guess what? That's those rivets have broken, they fractured. There's nothing holding your wing on at this point. And let's see if we can move our camera there a little bit to get a better view. So yeah, see that space there? That is, uh, that's a space of death, all right? There's supposed to be rivets. You can see the rivet head. All right, I see the rivet head. I see no rivet holding my aft spar on. And guess what? Both wings look like this. There's nothing holding on the aft spar to your airplane, except maybe that inner rivet's still kind of attached. Bottom line is the main spar, I don't know, it's probably fine. We'll find out when we really start chopping things off on this airplane. But the aft spar is something that's very easy to check here during your pre-flight. Guess what? It's really, really bad. This is terrible. I would never fly an airplane like this. Obviously, this airplane actually flew for probably 40 or 50 hours before anybody discovered this. This is one of the many problems we have on this airplane that makes it, well, a great candidate for this video series of what's inside of an airplane slash let's destroy an airplane video series. That's what we're doing with this guy is um, systematically destroying it and explaining to you what is inside of the airplane. Things like that, what's inside your wing. We're about to go ahead and remove a fuel tank and some other things here. So can the airplane fly with a missing rivet? Um, well, common sense tells us this airplane flew with several missing rivets in a very, 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 very crucial place on both wings for several hours, many hours, tens of hours. Something to think about, right? Never ever would I recommend you go fly an airplane with rivets missing even one from a wing spar attached point. That is a terrible idea. Would I fly an airplane like this? Well, it's illegal. You can't do that, all right? You cannot just walk up to an airplane, say something's missing, no big deal, and then go fly it. You have to get an A&P, IA involved, because this is not how the airplane was meant to be, all right? When it left the factory, they didn't say, no, oh, you can fly with up to 20 rivets missing, it's fine. They said, no, this is, we built this airplane, this is how it's supposed to be, that's the way you need to fly it. It's not legal to do this. Now, if I was out of water, stuck in the middle of the desert on a dry lake bed camping, and my option was to either, you know, basically dive dehydration or fly an airplane with this rivet missing. Take a guess at what I'm gonna do. It's probably not gonna be go thirsty, all right? Probably gonna wind up somehow or another getting this airplane back to base. If I walk out to the Venice airport in Florida where I drove to the airport, and it's very easy to drive here and then drive back home, and I notice, hey, I'm missing a rivet. Do you think I'm gonna go fly it? Absolutely not. I'm gonna call an INPIA, have them fix it, or have them write it up, do something to make it legal to fly, because it's not legal to fly like that, all right? But if I'm far away from base, and I have no options, and it's a matter of safety to get home, then use your head here, guys. If it's at all avoidable, if you don't have to go fly, which we rarely ever have to go fly, then do the right thing. Make sure you're complying with the laws. That is the best answer I can give you here. And other than that, use common sense. If you guys haven't already seen all these videos here on YouTube, there's a whole playlist. The link is in the description below. 
a lot more of these videos on flyatmikealpha.com, about twice as many on flyatmikealpha.com as we go through the interior, go through the fuselage, go through the tail, go through the engine, every single part taken apart and explained on here. Uh, but yeah, next time you're doing a pre-flight, if your hands aren't greasy and your knees aren't a little dirty, you didn't do a very good job, bottom line, all right? Be thorough on your inspections. This thing went many, many flights, being missed by CFIs and by renters. Uh, before it was finally discovered during a 100-hour inspection by a very astute IA. Uh, so yeah, just food for thought there. If you're flying a lowing airplane, or any airplane for that matter, take your time, look at everything you possibly can, even use a flashlight during the day. It's okay, all right? It's actually helpful to use a flashlight during the day because even though it's bright, you get underneath the wing, it's a little darker even if you're outside in the sunshine. It's kind of hard to see things. Flashlights help. Definitely uh, something to use day or night. Really be thorough, take your time, guys. You don't want to pull an Embry Riddle and have that wing fall off. That'd be a bummer. So, any questions on this? Comments below, that's what they're there for. Leave your questions there, or go to flyatmikealpha.com, hit the Ask a Question tab at the top of the page. And, as always, guys, if you cannot fly every day, flyatmikealpha.com, check out all the other videos on the website. We will see y'all in the next episode. A little bit harder to control, and uh-oh, here we go.